Hello and welcome inside the Sanford Coyote Sports Center. We are talking USD women's basketball today with head coach Don Plitz White. Don, you uh, got this three game road trip started last week in Tulsa on Friday night where you escaped literally with a 76 72 win. I know you went into this game expecting a battle and you certainly got that. There was five ties, 13 lead changes. You have to imagine it was a pretty nerve wracking night for you. Well, I thought our young ladies played at a very high level, and, and certainly you're going on the road and you're playing against a team in Oral Roberts that's one of the best in the country in three-pointers made. And we didn't do a great job defending the arc in that game, you know, certainly not in the third quarter. But when we really needed to get stops in the fourth quarter, we were down 10, and in the, from the six-and-a-half-minute mark to about the three-minute mark, we had six consecutive stops, and that really turned the game. We were down six at that point in time went up five and that really was a difference maker for us. So I thought our young ladies played their best when things looked at the worst and, and looked very bleak. And I was really proud of the resiliency and the composure that our young ladies played with. Oral Roberts got you up against the wall a little bit in that third quarter. Uh, thanks in large part to Lakota Beatty. I mean, she went absolutely nuts. 20 points in that quarter alone. She took seven shots. She made all seven of them. Six of them were from beyond the arc. So what was she doing that allowed her to do that? Obviously, you got to get hot. You got to hit the shots. But they were doing something to get her the ball. Well, we tried covering her, gu guarding her in a couple of different ways, and, and they got some off of some ball screen switches, you know, that, that were kind of just tough shots that she made one on one, step back kind of threes against a, a, like kind of a little bit of a zone. Then we switched and went to a different zone. She hit another one in that scenario. Just so, and some of them were really, really well contested by our kids. But then we found a way in the fourth quarter to limit those opportunities and not give her some of those same looks. And I thought that was really a, a tribute to our young ladies. You know, you're playing against a team in Oral Roberts that's not only great on the offensive end, but is also the best defensive team in the conference in field goal percentage, in three-point field goal percentage, and a team that turns their opponents over. So I was really proud that our young ladies found a way to take care of the basketball against them. And we had six turnovers in the first half, had two in the second half, ended with 12 assists, eight turnovers. So really found a way to keep ourselves in a game when we hadn't figured out how to get stops until that fourth quarter. Yeah, and, and they had you down 10 early in that fourth quarter, but you were able to turn the tables with a 19-3 to run. That's what helped you get in front and stay in front. So what was the key to that? I thought there were a number of things. Defensively, the five kids that were in during that stretch really, really did a great job of locking down, defending, and getting stops. On the offensive end, I thought our, our young ladies spaced the floor really well. Allison Arns really had a tremendous, tremendous game and really has been playing extremely well over her last four games in the season. She's had 14 assists, four turnovers, is playing at a very, very high level and was able to get to the rim and make an awful lot of things happen for us in that stretch. Kira Duffy played extremely well in that game overall and in the fourth quarter really made a lot of things happen for us. Those two down the stretch were 12 of 13 from the free throw line and that really sealed the deal for us. You got out of there with a win and it's always special when you get that done on the road. You move on from there. You go to Omaha where you beat the Mavericks 80 to 49 on Sunday afternoon. Great balance and efficiency on offense in this game. Some really stingy and opportunistic defense. Was this one of the more uh, complete efforts on both ends of the floor? Well, what was great about this game is that we, we had been scoring the ball fairly efficiently in the conference so far, but we hadn't really started the game that way. So against Oral Roberts, we finished the game scoring at about a 45% clip. But the first quarter, we had a 33% clip. First quarter against Omaha, we started by scoring at about a 70% clip, which was, which was phenomenal. And then, but what we didn't do a great job of in the first half was taking care of the basketball. We turned it over seven times, I think, in the first half. Those seven turnovers led to 17 or 16 or 17 points of the 31 for Omaha. So in the second half, did a much better job taking care of the basketball took away some of their opportunities early offense and then were really good defensively in the second half. I think um, Omaha scored at a 26% clip for the entire second half, 15% in the third quarter, and that really allowed us to separate. Individually, let's talk a little bit about Taylor Frederick. She scored 10 against Oral Roberts on Friday. She comes back with 12 more on Sunday. She did it very efficiently. Um, best two game stretch for her in quite a while since, since November, the very beginning of the season where she had four pretty solid games in a row. So what was different about her? How'd she get it going, at least offensively? Well, I think Taylor's a young lady who puts in a lot of time outside of practice and that, that confidence is there and has played at a very high level in the last two games. It, but we've seen that in practice and I think something that, you know, she's a, a young lady that early on in her career we've really relied on to be a defensive stopper and a rebounder for us. And then now going into her junior year, someone we've really relied on to score the ball. She's handling the ball for us. She's shooting it from the arc. And, and I think it's just playing with a lot of confidence. 
confidence right now and is, is making good decisions, is reading the defense really well, making good decisions. Started the game at Omaha with, with two threes, you know, and, and that was obviously the game plan was to, to help in the lane on all everyone else and you know, kind of dare her to make some shots and she stepped up and she made two really big shots for us early on to kind of set the tone. I'm certainly thinking you're hoping Taylor continues that going forward into this week as you wrap up the uh, three game road trip on Thursday in Grand Forks against North Dakota. This is a team that you've seen each of the past couple of years, but this is of course the first time you've seen the Fighting Hawks now as a conference member. Does that add anything extra to this one? What I think is pretty neat about this t rivalry, and I see it as a rivalry because when we've played each other in the non-conference, in, in the WNIT here, and then last year in a non-conference game, our fans were really, really excited to, to reestablish the rivalry. And now that we're in the same conference again, I think it's going to be something that's really fun for, for a lot of our fans. So I anticipate it to be certainly a very, very tough environment. We're on the road, third game in a row. Uh, we're playing against a team who's one of the best rebounding teams in the country, a team that really attacks the rim very well. Clavo's the best scorer in the con or in the conference right now. And, you know, Morton is a kid that can really make things happen. And Bailey Strand is someone who really lit it up against us last year when we played them right before Christmas. So a team that you know can score it around the rim in a, in a couple different ways, get into the post kids, really attack the rim with drill penetration, but can also space the floor. And a team that is, is certainly uh, very, very aggressive and very well coached. And then a uh, quick turnaround again, two weeks in a row, very quick turnaround. You got to come back home, play Western Illinois on Saturday. Early thoughts on the Leathernecks? Well, it was certainly a very, very difficult challenge. You know, you talked about back to back weekends where we play and have very short turnaround against an opponent who has a lot more time than we do to prep. This is one that's very similar. It's going to be our third game in, in seven days. It'll be Western Illinois' first game. It'll be, you know, we're on the road in, in Grand Forks. We play on. Thursday night and then we'll get back on Friday after Western Illinois gets to our facility beats us here probably has a practice and gets relaxed and is at the hotel you know at that point in time so a very very difficult challenge you're playing you know one of the teams that in the country one of the top 10 teams in the country in terms of three pointers made and, and so now you have you have very little prep time at all to face a team that plays a very very different style this year's team even though their style is somewhat similar to what it's been in the past, a very different personnel to some extent. And so it's certainly going to be an incredible challenge for us. All right, well, good luck to you. Uh, first off Thursday night, safe travels home, and then uh, we'll all get to see you here on Saturday afternoon against Western Illinois. Sounds good. Thank you, Jay.